So CR Speed's first ad for their locking race holster appeared in USPSA's Front Sight Mag back in 1996. They first debuted on the world stage at the World Shoot in 1993 where the South African team sold off their gear to shooters from around the world and were one of the first holster solutions for the newfangled guns with fancy electronic sights. Fast forward to today and CR Speed has taken their race holster design and applied their concept of making it universal and introduced the newest holster in that lineup and and that is the strangely named The Compact. I'm David with the Humble Marksman channel here on YouTube. Are you ready? Stand by. So the CR Speed Compact holster is exactly kind of what it sounds like. It is a compact version of their WSM2 style holster that has been made adjustable so it's universal to fit a bunch of guns and it is pretty lightweight but similar to the mag pouches which I've done a video reviewing the mag pouches it uses sort of a C-back style holster hanger with this kind of rod and strut system that su suspends the holster well away from your body and it is pretty comfortable. So because this is the internet and US law says I have to tell you CR Speed did send this in for review but I am going to tell you exactly what I think about it. I'm not under any sort of agreement to say only nice things about the holster and to kind of get that ball rolling my biggest complaint about this and this is going to kind of set the tone for it and I've used this holster for like a month now I've shot a match with it I attended a training class with it so I've put in a lot of dry fire with this rig so I feel like I know it pretty well at this point my biggest complaint about this holster is that they don't offer it in any color other than black. The WSM2 holsters are available in all these really cool like race car, exotic supercar type colors, and this one's only available in black. If I wanna look fast on the range, I, I just have a black holster. And black is like the least popular color for supercars. But kidding aside, I really do appreciate CR Speed's sort of design approach to how they do the things they do. They really do come at whatever problem they're solving like the simplest way. And there are other holsters on the market that require adjustment to fit whatever gun you want. This one came set up for basically like a standard division 2011, a limited division 2011. So the only thing I had to change to make it fit my Bull Armory Ultimate Racer was the muzzle support. I had to put in a longer muzzle support. So we'll talk about adjusting it in a bit, but we'll just kind of talk about how the thing works and go from there. So the lock on the holster is accomplished via this little lever right here. There is a little detent that goes inside the trigger guard and retains the front of the trigger guard. And and when you move this lever over it, it cannot come out of the holster. I can invert the gun and shake it. It does, it's going nowhere. But the second I unlock it, I can rip it up pretty easily off the holster. Uh, to actually holster the gun, you make sure the muzzle is on the little cone and then you rock it down in and you'll hear it click. At this point, you can move the lever and now the gun is locked in the holster. CR Speed kind of has a philosophy on supporting the gun in three different places. They get the trigger guard, there's a little shim right here on the frame where they support the frame and they have the muzzle. So what ends up happening, and the holster is unlocked right now, is the gun is very stable. Uh, it's not going to come out of the holster unless, even under its own weight, unless you give it a gentle tug to defeat the retention on the trigger guard. So it is very stable and as somebody with a multi-thousand dollar gun hanging off their hip with an optic on it, it's nice to know that you won't be able to kind of dislodge the thing just by kind of hitting it the wrong way. So it's very stable and of which that I am thankful. The other biggest feature that I like about this holster is how the cant is accomplished. Since everybody uses basically speed cants, you can see that I have kind of a forward swept cant on my gun. Pretty much everybody does that. The way that that's accomplished is it's not just a straight drop down like a lot of other holster hangers where there's sort of that thigh pad that kind of bumps into your thigh. There's this little arm that kind of swings forward. And while that's really nice is because when you like bend over and pick up stuff on the range, you don't have that thigh pad kind of digging into your thigh, restricting your range of motion. So I didn't realize that was something I really liked until it was gone. So I really like their holster hanger. It's kind of thinking outside the box, but it's super stable. Talking through the adjustment and what you're kind of getting in for, uh, it's not as bad as you would think. Honestly, it's super intuitive how they've done it. There's not that many pieces to change. When you get the thing, it's going to come with this kit of parts that you can change it out to fit basically any popular competition gun. 
but to sort of talk you through it real quick, first thing you would be doing if you're not shooting like a double stack 1911 or 2011 frame is to unscrew the little lever here on your side of the pistol, take that off and put the correct detent to go into the trigger guard into the holster, screw that sucker back on. Then if you flip the holster around when it's off the hanger, there are two screws on the back of the holster there. This holds several different shims. They have a great piece of instructions that tell you the correct shims that you need to be using for your trigger guard thickness. But if you're not on the list, you can kind of play with it and work by feel to figure out how many shims you need to be using to shim it in place. Once you have the right number of shims, you can put those screws back in. You then have this little nylon washer that makes contact with the frame. You back it out until the frame is supported on the thing and it's going to kind of take a lot of the wiggle out of the gun in the holster at that point. And then you can set the muzzle length on the support. Now for all open guns, you're basically going to be using the long support, but they will give you an idea of where the cone needs to be and you can sort of just play with this thing and slide it back and forth until you get the correct length for it. And that's really how easy it is to set up. Uh, it, it was a very, very quick process, like knowing almost nothing about it and just kind of figuring it out. I was able to get it set up by tweaking with all the stuff to make sure I had the right settings in about 10 minutes. That's from taking it out of the box to fitting my gun to it to getting it on the belt. I was really surprised how quickly it went together. So that is the CR Speed Compact in a nutshell. I wish it came in outlandishly loud colors and that's honestly my biggest complaint about the thing. They sell for about $200 so it's not exactly an inexpensive holster but if you consider that it fits a bunch of other guns, it really provides a lot of value, especially you international guys who can shoot this in basically all divisions. You could buy one holster and shoot all your guns at competition with them in all the divisions, and that would be really awesome. I really appreciate kind of the sleekness of the design and how simple it is, how rock solid it is on the belt. So I appreciate the good folks over at CR Speed for sending this in for review. If you wanna check out all the other CR Speed products, I'll put a link in the description down below. If you've made it this far, please go ahead and hit the like video. That really helps here on YouTube. I've got a Patreon page if you wanna look behind the scene where just a buck a month gets you access to three to five posts per week. If you've made it this far, here is the video on the Versa mag pouches and another video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. I appreciate you guys, I'll catch you on the next one.